I think most stories start at the beginning. But here, I think it can be better explained by starting at the end. So here I am at a waffle cafe at 3.30 in the afternoon. The girls at Triple XX Exposure, two tables behind me, were complaining about their boss again. The three girls right in front of me were trying to stuff themselves with toast, and the waitress, Gardy, had just filled my mellow yellow. Then a shadow fell over me. Well, Max, my voice was full of sarcasm. I was wondering when you were going to show up. Max was Maxwell Carnes, my former father-in-law. E, Chris, I, can we talk? Damn, I'd known this man for over three years now, and this was the first time I'd ever been appreciated by him because I saw someone different, not super confident and all controlling. I needed to hear it and see it. Sit down, Max, you're scaring the kids. And he sat down across from me. The girls looked at us with a surprised look. You see, Max has always been a strong man, both in body and mind. After all, he owns the biggest warehouse in the county and the only real trucking business within a hundred miles around. When, some fifteen years ago, the local economy went south, Max stayed afloat and many people owe him their livelihoods, their homes, and, heck, their lives. Take into account also the fact that he's six feet six inches tall, plus he still looks like he works in the big house and is someone people didn't mess with. Max sat across from me in a separate booth. Damn, he looked like shit. Unshaven, circles around his eyes. Insomnia at the Carn house? Poor kids. Chris, I know you're hurting, but can't you and Kelly get over this little incident and... Little incident? I forced myself to shut up with an effort, even though my heart seemed to be beating like it was about to burst out of my chest. My hands were sweating, and I fought the urge to strangle the man sitting in front of me. It took me a few seconds to calm down, reminding myself that I didn't want to fight him. I wanted to win. As I calmed down, I noticed that everyone seemed to be trying their best to ignore us. But hell, I knew they wanted to listen. They wanted the dirt. Well, why not give it to them? Okay, Max, what part of this incident do you want me to forget? I asked, not raising my voice, but not trying to whisper either. It was just one time. Wrong, Max. It went on for years, and you know it. She's never done this before. She's never cheated. Come on, Max. She battened me for years. You want to hear the whole truth? Fine. I picked up my biscuit. When I first met her and tried to get her number, she deliberately flaunted every guy who wanted to sleep with her, as well as the ones who had already timed her. Why, Max? Why was she doing that? She tried to push you away, Chris, but you defeated her and- Nope, I said, interrupting him as I spread apple jam on my toast. She was trying to see if I was willing to fight for her, and like an idiot I did, I gave her the attention she demanded. I took a bite of my cookie and continued. And then she brought me home to introduce me to dad. And you hated me even then. Hated my politics, hated my career, hated my style and everything. At first I thought it was just Papa Bear growling. But no, you just didn't like me. I wasn't good enough for your precious little girl. I took another bite. The jam was good. Max's jaw went up and down, but the words couldn't get out of his mouth. We both knew I was right and he couldn't argue with that. But I wanted to live with it. I had to prove to you that I was a good guy. But I couldn't do it. Don't argue with Daddy, just accept what he says and don't say or do anything. Oh, we had a few battle royals over that. And after all that, I just sat back and let you insult me. Tell me, was there such a thing as me humiliating you in front of all your friends, sitting there arguing with you about everything and winning? No, you don't remember that. Hell, I didn't care. I wanted us to stay together. Do you wonder what she was trying to do? See how subservient I was? I took a big sip of my drink, which gave me a chance to get a good look at Max. He hadn't expected this. He wanted me to be hurt and torn. Then he could come to me, begging and crying in his humility to save my marriage. Yes, just like that. Do you know what happened thereafter? She started hanging around with old boyfriends again, telling me they were just friends. I held up my hand to stop Max from rushing to her defense. I know she never cheated back then. Believe me, after I beat up poor little Thomas for grabbing her ass in that bar, they all came to me and said nothing happened. She just, what was that all about? 
checking up on me again. She wanted to see if I was jealous of her, whether I would react to her seeing her old lovers, guys she had in her bed in her house. Yeah, well, we broke up after that. Best three months of my life, I'll tell you honestly. I finished my cookie and shook my hands off. Max was silent. I didn't know if it was the realization that she wasn't as innocent as he thought. Then again, maybe he knew and that was my attitude. But hey, either way it worked, he wasn't talking. Well, my dumb ass let her talk me into coming back. It was around the time she stopped coming home so late. She did it to be with me more, and things were good, even really good. Then I screwed up by proposing to her. I don't know why I did it. I won the damn ring at a jewelry contest. It didn't mean that much to me, but I did it. And that's when the weird shit started happening. All these really hot chicks suddenly started swirling around me. They met me at work, at the gym, while shopping everywhere. Well, a lot of pretty girls were okay, but it was not okay when they all started tempting me, making me eat lunch, outright telling me they'd like me. Heck, even Lee Ann started doing that. One time she even locked us in the pantry and unbuttoned her dress. She said she was naked. I fought every instinct God gave me not to look at her, told each of them I was engaged in everything, but nothing seemed to work. How damn surprised I was at the wedding preparations when I saw those girls again. They were her friends, relatives, acquaintances from high school. Oh, Lee Ann even told me she was sorry, but they just must have made sure I wasn't an asshole cheating on poor little Kelly. Did I pass the test well, don't you think? Then on my wedding day, I had another test when you made me sign that prenup. If I go along with cheating on your Kelly, I get nothing. Notice nothing was said about if she cheated on me. I asked you what would happen if she did. Could I be free and understood? That was an omen, huh, Max? Oh, you had your lawyer spell it out. If your girl cheats on me, I get $12,000 in my bank account, keep my clothes, my car, and my little house, which, by the way, I got from my grandparents. I leaned over to Max. But I signed it. Remember, Max, I was able to sign it. And then... What the hell happened last Saturday? First, I get called into work for eight goddamn hours because someone decided they'd rather go to a goddamn amusement park than go to work. Make my day hell, but that was just the beginning. And Max? Then I get home after work. Can't park my car in the driveway, have to park on the street. Why? Someone has taken my spot. Have I thought about it much? Well, yes, but not like that. Thought one of the damn neighbors parked there and Kelly never ordered them to get out. So I get home and see Kelly's car that was parked in the driveway, but where was Kelly herself? Kelly, I called out. I'm home in the bedroom. Like a lamb, I went up there to ask about the car, but I didn't expect what I saw when I walked into the room. Kelly and this guy in bed together, in our bed, in my bed. I was stunned for a second, and then I screamed, what's going on? Silly, isn't it? I mean, my wife was cheating on me, but right then I wasn't thinking straight. Oh, honey, I love you, but I have to have more than you're giving me. Don't worry, I'll still sleep with you. It's just sex, and it has nothing to do with you. She, she, damn it, she just said that. So the bastard's all right, has my wife, and she starts moaning there and everything while my blood boils but she went even further. Honey, can you get us something to drink, please? It brought me out of my shock, I'll tell you that. You want me to get you two a drink? She was so sweet to her cuckolded friend when, smiling, she ordered me, yes, do that, bring something from your beer supply. Damn it, bitch, if you're thirsty, you can get your own, I spat out, but you get your own. Now don't say that, she mumbled unhappily. Oh, shut up, bitch. You want it and you'll get it, but not from me. No cheating, isn't that what we said before we got married? The little bastard slowed down. Come on, man, don't rock the boat. You're gonna get it four or five nights a week. And hey, you're gonna be living in this big house with that nice ass, so just take it. Tell me that again, and the rest of your days you'll only eat through a tube. I'd never seen a man deflate before. Fuck you, bitch. Keep the goddamn house. I'm out of here, I yelled. And who the hell did I run into in the hallway? Mike, your damn son. What a twisted family you have, huh? Mike was so eager to help his sister. 
Slow down, Chris. It's not like you. Fuck you. What the hell are you doing here? No, forget it. I'm getting out of here. Get out of my way. I tried to walk past him, but that dumb ass grabbed my arm. Now, you know I don't like Mike. So when he grabbed me, that's when I did it, you know? Does he feel better now? One punch? That's all it took. I swear I was going to try to break his jaw, but I hit him in the neck. Dude, if you ever get punched in the throat, you're out of the fight. Then I headed to my room and grabbed my camping backpack. I needed that gear and headed for the door. Mike's feeling better, Chris. He's, well, the doctors say that. Great, but really, who cares? I toyed with the toast before continuing. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. Kelly ran out of the house as I was leaving, her little robe flapping, and she was screaming up a storm. But hey, she made the bed. Where was I supposed to stay? Well, that turned out to be easy. I still had my old house, and I'd recently finished remodeling it. I hadn't rented it out yet, so I had the perfect place to stay. On Sunday, I drove back to the house to get my stuff. No one was there. Maybe everybody went to church, I don't know. So I grabbed my clothes and anything I might need and went to the Salvation Army to get at least a bed. This floor was too hard. I heard laughter all around me as I took a sip of dew. And who was waiting for me when I got back? Your darling little daughter. Well, the bed could stay in the truck. That's all I had until then. Parked the truck and headed for the door to get in. Chris, Chris, she yelled. Man, she ran from her car toward me as fast as she could. Wait, please, we need to talk. I need to explain everything. Well, that's all I heard, because that's when I walked into the house. <laughs> she was banging on the door, pounding and ringing and everything, but I wasn't going to talk to the bitch. What's there to explain? She had another guy in my bed. End of story. So what did I do? Open the door and yelled at her? No. Maybe called the police? No. Slipped out the back door? No, I put on my headphones and started reading a magazine. Eventually, the cops came and ordered her out. It took them a while to get me to open the door, but after I noticed their car lights, I was forced to do it. No big deal. My house is in my name. I can be there if I want to be. So they sent her away. If anyone else had done it, they'd be in jail, but she's your little girl. Max nervously thanked Gardy as she set a cup of coffee in front of him. He wasn't used to this. He was usually in control. He always ran the show. But this time I was the host and I didn't let go of the reins. Well, on Monday, I withdrew my 12000 from my bank account. I also canceled all of our joint credit cards, not that I ever used them, and cleaned up. I also went to S&K and got an interview. They were looking to expand and tried to talk me into it for a while, but I wouldn't because Kelly thought it was too much of a risk. Heck. When I went to them myself, they made me an offer, a good one, too. I accepted it. Then I went to work, walked into my boss's office. Tom, I hate to say this, but I'm leaving. Why? I thought you liked it here, the man was genuinely concerned. In fact, I hate it. You're a good boss, man, but I didn't go to college to be a clerk. Look, I hate to leave you stranded, but I recently caught my wife, and I gotta go. Shit. Really, Kelly? Well, I don't want to let you go. Is there any chance I can talk you out of it? He asked. Sorry, Tom, there's nothing you can do. Thanks for everything. So I left the office, but I saw his slick secretary talking so innocently on the phone. You know the witch was telling someone what she overheard by accident. Then I went to see Mrs. Hines. Nice shark, isn't she? Yeah, I know she has an assistant helping me with my divorce. But there was another person waiting for me who was hoping Kelly wouldn't get the paperwork at work on Tuesday. Well, they kept trying to get me to talk to her all day yesterday after the papers were served and all day today. But I just walked away. I guess your guys were watching me and saw my car. You thought you were going to fix that between Kelly and me? So, Max, what was that little incident? Was she having fun with someone else in our marriage bed? Let's see, Max. Why did she cheat? Look, I had choice one. I had to leave them in my bed. Well, she would have liked that. A higher sex drive would have been satisfied. Oh, I wanted to fuck them all. Hell, half the fun of the chase is, it is making her want you so badly that she attacks you. But Kelly never liked the little notes, the calls at work, the lunches, the little gifts. A waste of time and money. 
Oh, I think she was getting revenge on me for cheating on her. No, wait, I never did that. I didn't have an affair while I was dating her or married to her. Hmm, that can't be true. Oh, she heard about the bachelor party and wanted to get me back for that wait because I spent that night talking to Stacy and Mike after their last fight. Now, why was she cheating? And how did she want to make things right? I tried to give her everything in her emotional and physical needs. Mm. What if this was another test? To see if I was in love with her or if I just needed the money she had, the money you were spending to support her edible flowers store. Oh, I like that. What if she wanted me to find them, get mad and beat up a guy or run away? Well, that would explain Mike showing up. He was there to keep me from killing the guy or keeping me from running away so she can tell me that she's that happy with me, that now she knows I really love her because if I was there for the money, I'd be fine if she was fucking. But that's just me gone. I didn't play that game, Max. For years, I tried to endure your whole damn family and your trials. But what did I get? Trust, love, respect? No, I came home to see how she preened me so I could prove myself again. Max finally came to his senses. Isn't there something that could save your marriage? I know Kelly genuinely loves you. He almost pleaded. Does she love me, Max? I'm tired, man. I really am. I heard someone open the door of the Waffle Cafe. I don't know what you did, Max, to raise your daughter like that, but I can't live with it anymore. And she's never going to change. She needs someone who can constantly show her he needs her. And I don't have that anymore. She tested me for the last time. I loved her, Max, but she killed that. I hope you're all happy now. I stood up. Max didn't move. As I put on my jacket, I saw Kelly standing at the counter. She had heard my last remark. She must have been the last person to enter. She stood there as our eyes met. I saw tears in her eyes, a tremor in her chin. But I felt nothing. I took out a $20 bill, put it on the table, and walked out into the night. 